What's happening? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. iOS 7.1 is officially out and brings a whole bunch of improvements and tweaks. Now, if you've updated to it already, you'll notice iOS 7's animations are snappier and things like the slide to power off or the buttons in the phone app have been revamped. Siri now allows you to manually control it by holding down the home button when you speak and releasing it when you're done. The calendar has an option to display events in the month view, finally. There's also an auto HDR setting for the iPhone 5S camera that only takes an HDR version of the picture when it detects that it's optimal to do that. Now, iOS 7.1 also improves Touch ID recognition, and there's plenty of other smaller tweaks. So far, I'd say this is definitely worth the update, but the most annoying feature is how they changed the coloring of the caps locks button. And I might be stupid, but it's actually just more confusing. Try typing a sentence that has alternating words with capitalization, and you'll see what I mean. And that's a bad apple. <laughs> Unless I'm actually stupid. But come on, iOS 7.1 is old news already after being out for a few days and a new report by 9to5Mac says that Apple will bring a more polished Maps app in iOS 8. Their sources say Apple's database for iOS Maps will be upgraded with enhanced data so it's significantly more reliable thanks to acquisitions of several companies like Broadmap, Embark and Hopstop. New points of interest and new labels will make places like airports, parks and bus stops easier to find and the biggest change will be bringing back public transit directions that will be deeply integrated into the new Maps application. Now, the report also says the Bege has begun work on augmented reality functionality that uses the iPhone's compass hardware to visually see nearby points of interest. This feature is likely to surface down the road and not anytime soon, and we shouldn't forget that Apple received a patent for this functionality in 2011. Now, in more iOS 8 news, 9 to mac also reports that Apple is considering making iTunes Radio its own standalone application to boost usage and compete against standalone apps. The concern is that since it's just a tab in the music app, it doesn't have a promoted presence in iOS 7, and that's hurt its growth for the service because they're not getting enough advertising revenue. Now, the number one reason why I use it over Pandora is because it's integrated with my music collection, you dum-dums. Now, Apple can complain all they want, but a report from Edison Research shows that in less than six months after its release, iTunes Radio has become the third most popular music streaming service in the US, trailing behind Pandora and just behind iHeartRadio, but still beating out Spotify. They're nowhere close to the top spot, but it's a good bet they'll take over the number two spot in the next six months with or without a standalone app. All right, new job listings from Apple could be setting up future generations of the new Apple TV to include cameras for gesture-based motion controls, according to Apple Insider. Available positions for Apple's camera software team revealed that alongside the products like the iPhone and the iPad, they also included the currently cameraless Apple TV. Remember now, Apple acquired PrimeSense in late 2013, and they're the company responsible for the tech behind Microsoft's first generation Kinect motion controls on the Xbox 360. Now, multiple reports still say a new Apple TV could be revealed as soon as April with the launch in the fall, but we'll find out soon enough if motion controls are part of this upcoming generation of the Apple TV. All right, to the quick bites. CarPlay was all the buzz with its integrated systems for almost all the major car manufacturers. But according to a Mac Rumors article, Pioneer is looking at the possibility of implementing CarPlay compatibility with both its existing and future aftermarket navigation and audio systems. Now, there's been no official statement from Pioneer, but it would save a lot of headache for people who have wanted to do a custom iPad installation on their car, and I'd be one of those people. Also, Apple has received its final approval for its massive 44-foot-tall sliding glass door Union Square Apple Store in San Francisco. Apple can now begin construction just three blocks away from their existing San Francisco store. And in a Wall Street Journal interview at South by Southwest, the big geek, we call him Shaquille O'Neal, told them that he spends about $1,000 on apps every week, a week. Now, this week it was Deer Hunter games and he really wants an iWatch as well. But I've got nothing but love for you, Shaq Daddy. He was the first verified user on Twitter, but he recently launched an Indiegogo campaign to make a sequel to the original Shaq Fu game called Shaq Fu, A Legend Reborn. He's trying to raise $450,000 to make that happen. But you know, the man has enough money to do it himself especially if he's spending over 50 G's a year on apps. Come on, Shaq!
That's a bad apple. Ah! But please, don't do this to my face. All right, let's get to the winners of our Steve Jobs figure giveaways. We asked you, who were the two WrestleMania 7 wrestlers from a couple episodes back? And the correct answers were two of my all-time faves, Hulk Hogan and, yes, the Ultimate Warrior. Now, lots of ladies got in on this one, so congrats to our email winners, Autumn Wilhide and Dimitri, who says, after a long day, he will cuddle with Steve and watch the apple bite. Dimitri, you have serious issues. And our Twitter winners, Wilson Gell and Jacob Zigalewski, who says he will dress Steve like a Barbie doll and replace it with one of his sister's Barbie dolls, which means you actually want a Barbie doll. All right, congrats to all of you, and we will be in touch. That's going to do it for this week's show. Email us at theapplebite at cnet.com or tweet me, and I'll do my best to get back to as many as I can. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another Bite of the Apple.